Greetings everybody, we're here uh, with Christine Cushing and uh, it's in the new year. There's a lot of uh, things going on and namely with, for Christine, what we have is an announcement of her third season of Fearless in the Kitchen. Very exciting. How's that? Congratulations. It's, it's very exciting. I mean, the biggest news about that is it's going on the own Oprah Winfrey Network. Wow. Which is huge news, so very Congratulations exciting. again. Yes, yeah, so we're casting, if you know any people, terrible cooks, you want to learn, want to have some fun, this is the time to do it. Okay, for those people that are perhaps interested in uh, applying for the show, what the kitchen? Uh, you can go to christinecushion.com and click the little link, and then you can do the whole audition process. We get you to put yourself on tape, you come in, we cut it. If you got a great story, if you want to have lots of fun, and you really need help cooking, this is the time. Uh, out of the, I know it's not you, Peter. You're good. So. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> With, out, of, out of the two seasons you had under your belt so far, yeah. uh, is there any uh, interesting stories you have about one particular person? Uh, there's a great story. A woman was so bad that she, her first time she made a ham, she didn't have any uh, toothpaste. So she went to the drawer and she put nails in it. <laughs> she brought it to the table and her family was like, are you insane? And she said, what? What's wrong with you, Peter? Added iron. Yes, and uh, so, but she was a great guest, and that's the kind of story, obviously, obviously that sticks in people's mind. But uh, we had a lot of fun together, and she really needed help. You so turned it around. Great. I did turn it around. Good yes. stuff. Nobody's eating nails. No, it's a positive thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you also came back from Greece this past year. I understand you every year. Yes. And uh, the last time we met, you had, you brought back an olive oil which you sell, which you branded yes. from Crete, which is where your mom's from. That's right. Okay. Uh, the second oil, and this is the latest edition, is an organic oil. So the first one is from Crete. This one comes from Mani, which is the South Peloponnese, the mainland of Greece. Different climate, different terroir, uh, same actual variety of olive. Completely different profile. What kind of olive is that? Koroneiki. Koroneiki. Okay. okay, indigenous. But this particular one on Mani compared to Crete has a smoother, more delicate finish. I actually even use this for baking. It's a phenomenal oil. It's a little bit more subtle. The pepperiness comes towards the end. Okay. Fruity, a little bit less grassy. Uh, phenomenal. I was really blown away. If I can ask a couple of questions with oil, yeah. is it an early hawk, considered an early harvest uh, olive oil? Yes, it's more in the early harvest. Avorelio, that kind of oil. Yeah, I mean, it's not full on, you know, totally, totally sharp with a bite. It's more kind of in the center, but it's certainly not uh, towards the end where it starts to get more flabby, more greasy. It's really, really fresh and vibrant. That's why I call it vibrant. Like <laughs> there it is. 100% <laughs> uh, USDA organic certified. Okay. Furthermore, in the olive oil, I was recently at a restaurant and the Italian chef had a lineup of four different olive oils yep. for different types of uh, dishes. Yep. Uh, what kind of a dish would you use uh, the, uh, the this, pure organic olive oil? Okay, this would be great for uh, a salad where it's a little bit more delicate. You don't want a really bold, bold flavor, something like Austin bib, you know, something that has a little bit of delicate uh, flavors in it. I also, it's great with chocolate. I use it for baking. I absolutely love it. It's really quite phenomenal. Wonderful. Actually. Okay, yeah. good stuff. And. Uh, how, are, how is the olive oil pressed for this? Like what method are they using? Same cold extraction like, like it is in the you know standard practice of uh, certified organic extra virgin olive oil. It's somewhere in the 4%, 0.4% acidity, which is very low. So as you know, 0.1 uh, is the maximum or 1% uh, is the maximum. This has 0.4. Okay. And uh, for those that live in the Toronto and the GT area, where can uh, they find Christine Cushing's olive oils? The best thing to do is go to my website again, christinecushing.com. But, you know, most large stores, it's in Loblaws and Pusateri's and Whole Foods and, you know, uh, definitely smaller stores. In so you have a link with all the, all the stores that would yes. appear. Yes. Wonderful. Yep. Okay. Uh, and they can buy it online as well. I, I ship from my website if people don't have a store near them. All right. Uh, since we're on the uh, topic of olive oils mm -hmm. and products, uh, it's uh, 2010. What are the uh, what do you see as people getting into food wise or a food trend? Mm -hmm. it's 2011. 2011. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I need but a it's coffee. Okay, I'm, yeah. I'll get you one after. That's all right. Uh, food trends. I think it's going to be an interesting year. I see uh, definitely still olive oils uh, moving forward. The whole idea of polyphenols and the health element of that. Uh, Grass-fed beef. I think people are becoming a lot more aware of that. Um, I don't think it will become totally mainstream, but it is going to be much more on the radar. Gluten-free baking, I think, is another thing. A lot more people have come out with, you know, allergies to wheat. They're discovering they're putting fat. Yeah, they're discovering, they and now issues. they're coming up with better ways of uh, creating great 
gluten-free cookies. My cousin actually has a gluten is has a gluten allergy. She made some chocolate chip cookies. I couldn't believe. I actually wouldn't have known. I, I wouldn't have known. Okay. They were that good. So that's going to be a big thing. Uh, and I think again, the local thing, the local thing is still really big. Only it's going to be better defined because we all use that term local, you know, regional, all that sort of stuff. More definition and kind of um, rustic food. I mm -hmm. think I've seen that a lot in in Toronto restaurants. Rustic. Low Stripping key, down the recipes and the ingredients. Low key, but still great quality, great experience, but not so much fluff. Do you, uh, well, since it's going to be rustic, I, I suppose it'd be a good year also for Greek cuisine and Greek food in general. Absolutely. And the other thing, speaking of Greek, Greek yogurt has gone mainstream, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> it has. Uh, I've, I've seen, uh, well, Fagia is now produced in the United States. Yeah. And uh, more and more companies getting into it. I think even Kraft now is produ producing their own Greek style yogurt. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Red, I think we're done for today. We're Thank done, Red. Bye. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll uh, be seeing you again soon with another installment. Uh, visit colorfogas.ca and, of course, christinecushing.com. I'll put everything down below on the video. Uh, and see you again. Ciao. Thanks. Ciao.